This next game was played just two rounds later against a very strong grandmaster named Sax. I had the black pieces. The opening was a Scandinavian. I've done a lot of work in this opening and come up with some very interesting ideas. This is how it went. E4, D5, E takes D5, Queen takes D5. Now usually white plays knight C3 here, but he played D4. And here I went into a long variation that I'd prepared. Knight C6, Knight F3, Bishop G4. This is all very, very double-edged play. Bishop E2. Notice, of course, that I can't take the pawn. Bishop takes F3, Bishop takes F3, Queen takes D4, because he can remove the defender. Bishop takes C6 check, followed by Queen takes Queen, and I lose the Queen. I castle. He plays C4. We're not going to do a deep analysis of this opening. This was all theory. Queen F5. Bishop e3, knight f6, knight bd2. Truth be told, we were following the game up to this point um, that I played against a very strong American grandmaster named Nick DeFermian, and I had a, an improvement on my game against him waiting for sacks, and he had been following that game. Here I played e5, d5, and knight b4. So here you can see what's happening. I'm penetrating these light squares on c2 and d3. My king is committed to the queen side, which is potentially weak. He can attack on the side. I have a potential attack on the king side. All my pieces are loaded up here. I can play e4 whenever I want to. It's a double-edged game. Very complicated. After knight b4, he played rook c1, a pawn sacrifice. Knight takes a2, rook a1, knight b4. He castled, and I played a6. So now, white has sacrificed a pawn in order to have a little bit of an opening onto my king side. The a file is opened up. If he can ever play b4 and b5, it'll be very good for him. On the other hand, my knight is firmly on the b4 square. I can't get kicked out by any pawns. My queen is well placed. I can play e4 in the center. I can potentially play bishop d6, e4, attack on the king side. So I like my position with black. From up to this point, we had both been following my game played in New York City against Grandmaster Nick DeFermian the year before. And he had played h3. In that game, I had played bishop takes f3, knight takes f3, and bishop d6. But what I had had prepared for over a year was the improvement c5, a very strong move which solidifies black's advantage. Next move I can play e4 if I want to. Also the maneuver knight c2 to d4 is possible. Black has a very strong game, and this was what I had in mind. Interestingly, Sax told me that he had prepared my game against DeFermian, and at this point sensed that I had something. He didn't see the idea which I didn't show him, but he told me he didn't see anything, he just sensed something. And he played rook a4. This was the first move outside of my opening preparation. Black's game is better, but once again, we feel the psychological reality of having difficulty with transitional moments. I had to find the best move. Now, if this had simply been a chess position, I would have very easily seen that at the heart of this position is that my knight on b4 needs to stay there. Why? Because if it disappears, he can play b4 and b5 and begin a big queenside attack. When it's on b4, it's a very, very strong blockade. I'm up a pawn, and I can nurse my material advantage without giving him any counterplay. Also notice that my knight on b4 holds his a6 point in case he wants to try any sacrifices. He can't play c5 because d5 falls. He has very little that he can do right now unless I release the tension, which is just what I did. Thinking very little, I played the move knight d3. What I should have done was e4, maintaining my knight on b4. Let's take a look. So after e4, he should play knight d4, and here I could play bishop takes e2. But better yet is queen g6, keeping that tension for a moment. If he allows me, next I can play bishop to h3, threatening mate, and if g3 I win his rook. I can always trade off bishops if I want to. Again, I'm up material, and I'm trading down. Black has a very good game. And my advantage is solidified because my knight on b4 holds to its position, holding down my queen side. If he tries to cut off my bishop's defense of it by playing c5, then his center falls apart. I can take on e2 and then take on d5. Black's game is excellent. E4 would solidify my advantage, and it's not a very hard chess move. Of course, in discussing what move is hard, what move is easy, we have to base it on the level of the player. So I can tell you that for myself, in this type of position, if I were to be given this in a problem or if I were to, in a normal playing circumstance, have to play black's position, I wouldn't have much trouble finding the correct move. But the point is that I wasn't thinking yet. I was still playing halfway between memory and thought. I wasn't yet immersed in the struggle. I had difficulty with the transition into playing chess. And after knight d3, my opponent was able to build up a very, very dangerous attack because I released it. By moving this knight, it's like I opened up the floodgates for his attack onto my queen side. And he took advantage of it very beautifully.
After knight d3, he played bishop takes d3, queen takes d3, and then played queen a1, potentially preparing a sacrifice on the a6 square. I defended my e5 pawn with rook e8, and now he began a beautiful sacrificial attack with b4. Now I played bishop takes f3, because if he takes with the g pawn, his structure's messed up. He took with the knight, taking the dare once more, sacrificing another pawn, queen takes c4, rook c1, queen takes d5, another pawn, and now he played rook a5, which was his idea, and after queen d3, b5, black has a very, very dangerous position, and white's attack is quite strong. I have less development, he's undermining my queen side, things can get pretty bad. After b5, I tried to develop a little bit by playing bishop b4, now I was fully in the heat of the battle, but he played b takes a6, bishop takes a5, queen takes a5, threatening mate on c7. I played queen d6. Now he stretched my defenses just a little bit thinner by playing knight g5, attacking the f7 point. Notice if he plays a7, I have to run away with my king. So he might be trying to pin down my rook to the defense of the f7 point so that I'll have less defending a8. I played rook h to f8. He played a7. And after king d7, he continued with the very strong bishop to c5. You can feel now that although I'm up a few pawns, I'm in a lot of trouble. And all of this is because of the one mistake, playing knight d3, releasing all the pressure. When you play against top grandmasters who are very, very strong attacking players like Sachs, you cannot allow them this kind of opportunity. Queen a6, he played queen d2 check. King c8, he didn't take the rook, but continued with the pressure. Bishop to d6, a brilliant attacking game by white. c6, now he took my rook. Bishop takes f8, rook takes f8, now he entered into the position, queen d6, Notice how strong his pawn on a7 is. It's not that he used it. Again, he kept it as potential. Kept me tied down to it. Queen d6, rook d8. He played queen b8 check. King d7. Knight takes f7. You can feel that black's game is getting crunched from all sides. Rook e8. Rook d1 check. Big trouble now. King e6, he played knight d6. Now, of course, I can never take his queen because he'll take back, make a queen of his own, and have won a rook. I played queen a4. He moved to safety, simply rook f1. And after rook g8, he played the very strong move, knight c8, blocking off my rook's defense of the a8 square. I played queen f4. My idea was to try to muster up some kind of counterattack, but it doesn't really work. He simply played queen d6 check, king f5, made a queen. And then after knight g4, knight e7 check, king g5, g3. I resigned the game. So... You can really feel how powerful White's attack was, how brutal my position became after the simple move of knight d3. And the sad fact of the matter was that this long, hard, defensive battle where I was trying desperately to save my king all could have been avoided if I had simply thought in the moment where I had to think. After he played his new move, rook a4, if I had solved the problem correctly by playing e4 and keeping the bind on his queen side with my knight on b4, everything would have been good. But instead, I didn't make the transition into thinking, and I allowed him a brutal attack. So the first game of this theme, I made that mistake in the opening and I was able to come back and win the game. This one, my opponent punished me very badly. Let's take a look at yet another.